Birria tacos are an extremely popular Mexican dish. They're usually made with beef or goat, but we're gonna be using chicken thigh instead to cut down costs, especially with the price of everything today. I just wanna make it easier for you guys. And I'm also gonna be cheating a little bit on the sauce. It's usually made with dried chilies, but if you don't have a specialist store or your supermarket or whatever doesn't sell it, you are gonna have to order it in online. And if you wanna make these straight away, it's pretty much pointless. Like I said, we're gonna need chicken thigh. This is bone in and skinless. We're gonna need tomatoes for both our pico de gallo as well as our sauce, brown onions, mozzarella cheese, some corn tortillas, chicken stock, apple cider vinegar, chipotle and adobo, which is what we're gonna use to cheat the sauce, white onion, lime, coriander or cilantro, as well as a jalapeno, but I just couldn't seem to get this anywhere. So imagine this red chili right here is a jalapeno, as well as a whole load of dried herbs and spices. With all that said and done, please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right, starting out, we're making a pico de gallo. So we need five tomatoes that could be sliced into quarters to make them easier to work with. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm removing the seeds and pulp as it can make the salsa a little bit soggy. But if you do do this, don't throw them away. We can use them in our sauce later on. As for the remaining tomato, lay it out flat on the bench and slice into thin, even sized strips. Rotate at 90 degrees and dice into small pieces. Also for a quick tip, if your knives aren't the sharpest, just flip the tomato over and slice it on the flesh side. Next is to dice one white onion that can be substituted for red onion if you prefer, and all of the scraps including the pills, tips and root can all be saved for a stock. You also don't have to make the horizontal slice if you think it's pointless, but it does create more flavour as the cells are more broken down, and all you should be left with is this little root piece. I'm using 10 grams or 0.3 ounces of coriander or cilantro. I know lots of people don't like this, so for those that don't want to use it, you can just skip out on it, but for those that are using it, just give it a quick rough chop. Like I said in the intro, imagine this is one jalapeno, and this can just have its stem removed, slice it in half, and make thin slices across. It is up to you if you want to remove the pith and seeds, and this can then be diced into small pieces. Also, if you're wondering why it looks a little bit wet, it's because I keep my chilies in the freezer. The last thing for the pico de gallo is two small limes, or one large one, to which can be halved and juiced by hand, or with a citrus juicer. Just use whatever you have. Let's then add all of this to a mixing bowl, try not to spill it everywhere, which I seem to be doing quite often lately. I recommend only adding in half of the lime juice to start, along with sea salt flakes to taste and cracked black pepper, and just give this all a really good mix through. The reason I say only add half of the lime juice is because we can always add but we can't take out, so once mixed, just give it a quick taste and adjust the taste with the lime juice if needed, as well as extra seasoning, mixing it through again, leaving us with this delicious and fresh pico de gallo that can be placed in the fridge until ready to serve. Now the rest of the ingredients are pretty quick and simple, so with another five tomatoes, slice them in half, slice each half into quarters, and slice into large chunks, which doesn't need to be precise at all. Next, we're going to need two brown or yellow onions, slice them in half, and cut into large chunks, which also doesn't need to be a certain specified size. Just make sure they're actually cut, and just don't put them in whole. Garlic is a must in this recipe, and we're using six whole cloves that can be roughly chopped, and you'll see later on into the recipe the reason why none of these ingredients are being finely chopped. Like I said in the intro, I'm using mozzarella as it's easily accessible. This also weighs 350 grams or 12.3 ounces. They can be freshly grated, but you can also use a cheese like Monterey Jack, which is also a really great melting cheese. Last but not least, slip 1.2 kilos or 2.6 pounds of bone-in chicken thigh into a mixing bowl, generously seasoned with sea salt flakes and one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil or any oil of your choice and get in there nice and deep like to massage your thighs. And if you think this is gross, just use a spoon or some tongs. Place a large high rimmed pan or pot over medium high heat, add in two teaspoons or five grams of black peppercorns, one and a half teaspoons or four grams of cumin seeds, one and a half teaspoons or three grams of coriander seeds, six whole cloves, and half a cinnamon stick that's been broken up. This can then be toasted for one and a half to two minutes or until lightly golden, and this is going to create a warm, floral, slight spicy and earthy combination of flavor and aroma. Once done, remove the spices, placing them into a bowl, and place the pan or pot back over medium high. Add in one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil or oil of choice. Add in the chicken thighs, try not to overlap them, and sear for three minutes, just until they've created a golden crust like this. Then flip them over and repeat the sear for another three minutes. After six minutes in total, remove the chicken, placing it into a bowl to rest and leave behind the fat. With that done, add in the brown or yellow onion and saute for three minutes, mixing it around regularly, separating the onion's layers, just until it's picked up the chicken flavor and created a nice light golden color. Add in the chopped garlic and continue sauteing for one minute, mixing it around every now and again, just so the garlic can start releasing its flavor. 
Now we're going to use 220 grams or 7.7 .7 ounces of chipotle and adobo to kind of cheat the sauce. One and a half tablespoons or 30 milliliters of apple cider vinegar for a slight sweet acidic touch. One tablespoon or two and a half grams of dried oregano for a slight minty freshness. One teaspoon or one gram of dried thyme for a sharp and earthy flavor. One teaspoon or two and a half grams of smoked paprika for a smoky peppery note and color. And five dried bay leaves for a slight piney flavor. Next, add in the spice mix we did before, the pulp and seeds of the tomatoes if you're using them, the chopped whole tomatoes, 650 milliliters or two and two thirds of a cup of chicken or vegetable stock to create depth, sea salt flakes to taste, and cracked black pepper. With all of that in, give it a really good mix through, concentrating on breaking up the chipotle and adobo, as well as the dried herbs and spices, and bring it all to a boil. Once boiling, reduce the heat to low and simmer for 20 minutes, stirring occasionally, just until everything has softened. Now the next thing to do is blend the sauce. I'm using an immersion blender, which means I don't have to move the pan, but if you do only have a blender, you'll need to wait for this to slightly cool before blending. Alternatively, you can press it through a sieve, and I'll leave a whole load of notes about this in the description, so be sure to check that out as it is quite important. After it's been blended, bring the sauce back to a simmer, giving it a good mix through for those flavors to become friends, then add in all of the chicken, along with any resting juices for extra flavor. Give it a quick mix through, ensuring the chicken is completely covered in the sauce, Test and adjust seasoning if need be, place on a lid or foil if you don't have a lid, remove it from the stovetop and place it into a preheated oven set at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and braise for 30 minutes. Let's then remove it from the oven, being careful of any escaping steam, place it back over a medium low heat, remove the lid and remove the chicken, placing it into a bowl. I like to do this one at a time, but you can do it however you want, but shred the chicken with a fork, trying your best to remove all of the meat from the bone, and just watch out for any cartilage or pieces of bone that may come along for the ride. All the chicken that's then shredded will leave us with all of this, and then we can pour over two thirds of the sauce over the chicken, placing the remaining sauce back over a low heat onto the stovetop, which we will use in a minute. Give the sauce and chicken a really good mix through, making sure every last bit of it is covered in the sauce, and then just set this aside for the time being. Now for the fun part, place a large non-stick pan over medium high heat, add in one teaspoon or five milliliters of olive oil, and once hot, get yourself one corn tortilla, dipping it lightly into the sauce on both sides, and then gently add it to the hot pan. I then recommend pushing it down with a flat spatula so it can't puff up too much, allowing it to create a really nice even golden crust. Then after one minute, carefully flip it over, evenly spread out with the grated mozzarella or Monterey Jack cheese, and add in as much of the chicken mix as you want, only on one side, but don't add too much, otherwise it will be extremely messy. This can then be gently folded over, pushing it down, and the melted cheese will act as kind of like a glue to lock it in place. We're then going to give this 45 seconds to one minute on each side, just until it's created an extremely beautiful golden crust, then remove it from the pan and place over a wire rack, continuing with the rest. Let's then lay these out onto a board, plate, or whatever you have, and I'd say three is a good amount per person. Spoon over the pico de gallo or add it into the tacos, top with some extra coriander or cilantro, which is completely optional, and finally serve with the leftover birria sauce. Leaving us with the best part, that's then dipping them into that delicious sauce, and of course, we can then dig in.